the most famous verse of the Bible that shows that God will meet all of your financial needs, that he will take care of you financially, is Philippians 4, 19. And most of you can repeat it with me. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. According to what? His riches. Now, most people have known that verse, but you're about to learn something new. I'm going to show you something about his riches and glory that you may not know. And this may explain why you're having difficulty meeting your needs. Notice Paul made this beautiful statement, but he only made it to the Philippian church. He didn't actually make this statement to any of the churches. So there's something about the Philippian church that was very special to Paul, why he would assure them that God is going to take care of them financially. So I want to know, are you like the Philippian church? Because before you start claiming Philippians 4.19, you have to ask yourself, are you the Philippian type of guy? Are you the Philippian type of woman? Are you a giver? Because that was the secret to this church. Listen to the context preceding Philippians 4.19. Notice what he says in verse um, Philippians 4, verse 16. For when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Notice they, they're giving to the Apostle Paul all the time. Not that I desire, this is the next verse, verse 17. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more may be credited to your account. Notice the language he uses. He's using banking language. You all do understand banks existed in Jesus' day. In fact, one of Jesus' parables, he mentions a bank. So banks existed, and he's using banking language. He says, I'm not desiring the gifts, because God's going to take care of my needs with or without you. But what I do desire is that you, you can be adding something to your account. You can be crediting something. Did you know you can credit a heavenly bank account. See, he's talking about a heavenly bank account. Jesus said it this way. Do not store up treasures on earth where moth and thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves what? Treasures where? Come on. In heaven. See, there is an account in heaven. There is a heavenly bank set up with your name. And when you give, you are making deposits into that heavenly bank account. Are you aware of that? Well, I didn't know I was doing that. Yeah, but Bishop, when I die, I'll get to see my account. No, no, no. You Don't separate heaven from earth. Heaven affects earth. Angels of heaven affect the earth. The psalmist says, hear our prayer out of heaven. God answers our prayer. Heaven affects planet earth. So when Jesus said store up treasures in heaven, he's not saying you can't see it until you die. He's saying... There is a heavenly bank account that you have set up that no thieves can steal. No thieves can break in. Now, they can break into natural banks and steal money. And you could go ahead and invest in certain earthly projects, and those investments can rot. But when you invest in heavenly causes, you're setting up a bank account in heaven. Now, this is what Paul is saying. I'm wanting more to be credited to your account. Then notice verse 18, I have received full payment and have more than enough. Notice the language, payment. That sounds like business transaction. He's you, Paul is intentionally using business transactions to explain how God looks at their giving. He says, I, I have received full payment. I have more than enough. I'm amply supplied. Now that I've received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God and my God. Notice the conjunction and. See, most people read this and they leave out the conjunction. My God going to meet my need. And yet they can't say and. And what? In other words, if you are a giver and if you're giving to a man or woman of God and you are supplying their needs when they're in need and you're helping them fulfill their ministry to preach the gospel, then you know what he's saying? You're setting up in a heavenly bank account. And now watch what he says. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches. What is he saying? The riches in heaven is the riches you have laid up in heaven. When you have given, you have stored up a heavenly treasure. You've given money to God. And now God sees what is in your account. And from that account, he supplies your needs. 
See, some of you want God to supply your needs, but you don't even have a heavenly bank account. You're not giving like you should. And if you're not giving like you should, then God's not going to supply your needs according to his riches because you haven't set any riches up to him. He meets your needs according to the account that you have set up, the gifts you are giving. That's why Jesus said, give, and it's going to be given back to you. If you don't give, it's not given back. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, that whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. You sow generously, you're going to reap generously. Why? Because when you're giving generously, you're storing up treasures in heaven. And from those treasures, God's supplying your needs. So he's not going to supply your needs if you don't have any treasure set up. And that's what some of you are doing. You're wanting your finances to be blessed, but you're nothing like the Philippian church. You're not giving to your church. You're not tithing. You're not giving alms. You're not helping people. because, And because of it, you have nothing credited to your account. So you need to be giving. If this ministry, if I've been a blessing to you through social media, have you given anything? Well, no, I haven't. Given. Why not? Haven't you been blessed? Well, yeah, but I thought everything's free. Listen, freely you have received, freely give. I'm going to give and give you the message regardless of whether you give. But that doesn't mean you don't have an obligation to give. Don't let other people give toward our ministry, and yet you're being blessed, but you don't give. See, and that's why you need to step out in faith and give. And I'm here to tell you, God's going to bless you. One final thing. Paul says, and my God, watch this, and my God will supply all your needs. When I read that, it hit me. Paul is changing the pronouns. He should have said, and your God will meet all your needs. But by saying my God, you know what he's saying? Because you have partnered with me, and this is what he's saying to the Philippian church, you have partnered with me, therefore the way God will treat me is the way he's going to treat you. So whatever my God is to me, he's going to be to you. And do you understand when you give to us and give to my ministry, what you're doing, you're, you're getting, you're tapping into the grace that's in my life. So the way God would treat me, he's going to treat you. See, and that's why you have to give, you have to support. So don't just enjoy the videos that you see every day here on social media. Give toward our, our ministry, be a blessing. Give to your church, make sure you're tithing to them. Giving alms, help the poor, do things. And therefore, you are storing up treasures in heaven. And from those treasures, that heavenly bank account, God's going to bless you and supply all your needs.